This episode is brought to you by Roundtable Group, the experts on experts. We've been connecting attorneys with experts for over 25 years. Find out more at roundtablegroup.com. Welcome to Discussions at the Roundtable. I'm your host, Noah Balmer, and today I'm excited to welcome Professor Joseph Laviola. Professor Laviola teaches computer science at the University of Central Florida and is the director of the uh, Interactive Computing and Experiences Research Cluster. Uh, additionally, Professor Laviola is the founder of Fluidity Software and JJL Interface Consultants. He's a senior member of ACM and the IEEE Computer Society and a published researcher. Professor Laviola has a PhD. PhD in computer science from Brown University. Professor Laviola, thank you so much for joining me here today at the Roundtable. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Let's jump into it. Uh, you have an impressive career as a computer science professor and a researcher. Has this always been a passion of yours? Yeah, uh, going back all the way to high school, I was uh, I I was very interested in uh, in in actually virtual reality. Um, it had just become, you know, uh, there was a, a, a hype cycle about VR, uh, around the time I was in high school. And, uh, and when I heard about it, I thought it was like, you know, just the, the most amazing thing that I, that I ever heard of. And I wanted to work on that. So that's always been sort of a focus ever since I started. Is it, what was that in the nineties? Yes. I, I remember when that first started, I had read an article in Wired Magazine about a program called High Cycle, where you you put on a VR headset and you ride a bicycle and it's like you're actually there. And I thought that it was the most amazing thing that I could possibly imagine. Is this around the time that you're that that you first? Yeah, it was got around that. Well? It was around that that time. There was a, 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 a an application that that came out called Dactyl Nightmare. And, oh uh, right, right. And yeah, in that one, you you basically play tag with another person, and there would be this pterodactyl that would fly by and would pick you up and take you away. And if it did, then you lost. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was it was amazing because it had you know it had head tracking, it had three D stereo, it, it had hand tracking. You you could you know move around um, with a with a, a joystick or a game controller. So it had a lot of the sort of common um vr hardware and and specifications that we see today and that was like you know a long time ago yeah sure so you know you've been into this obviously for a very long time what does it mean you know to continue to be an expert in computer science and vr you know this is obviously a very big field especially with the advent of ai you know how do you remain an expert what does it mean for you to remain current how do you stay relevant in the field well that's a that's a tough one. Um, you know, there's a number of different ways that that I that I have to do. I have to do that. Um, one of the first ways is is just to keep reading papers. You know, uh, the people are, are publishing you know new new work uh, all the time. You know, at various conferences and journals. So I do a lot of reviewing. So uh, it gives me a chance to sort of see what the latest and greatest things are out there. Um, and I also I will rely on my students, my 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 graduate students, to to uh, actually in effect teach me about some you know mm -hmm. the latest and greatest stuff. And then of course go into the conferences themselves. You know you get a really good chance to see what's going on in the field and how that relates to the work you're doing and allows you to uh, you know maintain uh, some level of of knowledge of, about the current state of the field. How did you first get into expert witnessing? Did you, you know, how did this field translate into a uh, career in expert witnessing? When you first got that very first call, uh, was that something that you even know was a, that you even knew was an option? Uh, had you heard of expert witnessing before? You know, I yeah, I, I'd heard about it. Um, um, actually, because uh, I my my father is a, is a, is a dentist and. Uh, and and he he had to do it. He had a, he got an expert witness job. So I, I'd heard about it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know anybody who who did it in in uh, in computer science. So I got an email out of the blue saying, "Hey, you know, do you do expert witness work?" And hmm. I was like, "Well, uh, no, but I I think it might be cool to to do it." And so I I I started. You know, I I had some interviews with with them, and uh, and they. Uh, they you know were interested and and I got hired to do some uh it was really some research work uh, at the at the time um so there wasn't wasn't anything too legal 
um, as you know, in sure. terms of the, the things that expert witness, witnesses do. But um, what it did was it gave me some experience, and uh, that experience, you know, leads to get to getting other expert witness uh, engagements and so on. So I don't even re remember what what it was for, uh, what, what, what company or whatever. I think I've got it written down somewhere, but. Do you think that that, you know, obviously this is a while back now, but do you recall if the preparation was adequate? Did you feel that, you know, during your very first engagement that the attorney did a good job of preparing you for what was to come, either a report or did that? Did, do, you, do you remember if that first one went to trial or anything? like uh, that? No, the first one no, didn't go to trial. Um, I think it was settled out of court. Um, I I had been asked to do research on a particular um, technology. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that, that, that happens with expert witness work and with the, the lawyers um, is that, you know, they, they sort of are very focused very much on the, on the patents, the patent, you know, what's out there, sure. the patents, not, they don't necessarily focus on what's going on in the academic literature. So, you know, that's one of the things that, 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 that I bring to bear is, you know, I have a good understanding of the, of the academic lit literature, maybe not as much of an understanding of the patent literature, because I don't, you know, I'm not reading patents all the time. Um, so, uh, so I was able to, you know, systematically go through that academic literature to find relevant material that helped them with the case. Um, the, at, at that time, there really wasn't a lot of, of, of training per se. I, I, I didn't, I didn't get a lot of that until I actually, um started doing depositions and that that's when the, the training started started to come in uh, well let's talk so, about let's talk about the depositions then a little bit so once mm -hmm. you had moved from that into your first depots uh you know how was that experience do you do you feel that you had adequate pre preparation for that or did you kind of hit the ground running a little bit um i yeah i believe that i did although you know um the first time you know, it, it was, it was, it was a challenge, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, their, their opposing counsel is trying to get you to say things that, that you don't want to say, right? Ultimately, yeah. it's, it's a big game and they want oh, you to let's... get, they want to get things that for you to say that they can say, you know, in their reports and in their arguments with, um, you know, at, in, in court to, to, to help their case. So, so you, sure. it's, the challenge is is in making sure that you say, you know, what what you say is truthful, obviously, um, but also to try to get out of the tricks that they use to, um, you know, to try to get you to admit to to, to certain things, and that that that's always a challenge. Let's dig into that a little bit. So when you say that they've tried to influence you and get you to say things in a particular way, obviously, you know, they 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 want to win their case, right? And they they want they think that, you know, your expertise is going to help them do so, but you know, what where's the line? What do they do? What are when you say they try tricks, they try to employ tricks or tactics to get you to say things that you may not actually believe. Uh, you know, what what sorts of things do they do to do that? And how do you avoid those sorts of pitfalls? Well, one of the things that you need to do um, with any, any of these depositions is you always need to be thinking a few steps ahead uh, of what the opposing counsel is saying. Um, because you're trying to see if they're trying to put you into a corner or back back you into a corner so that you have you have no op you no know, re recourse than to other than to, to agree with them, you know. Sure. And they'll, they'll they'll say things well, you know, Doctor Laviola, don't you? Wouldn't you agree that under you know this particular circumstance, this X Y and Z is true, you know? And and you know all they want you to do is say that you know under some circumstance it's it's true, um, but you're not you're not supposed to say that it's true. Right. And, and, right. and, and in all practical purposes, it's not true, but there may be, you know, certain conditions that occur, um, you know, that, 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 that may provide, you know, a, a, a sort of a window um, for there to be a little bit of truth. And, and, and if they can find that and then grab a hold of it, 
well, then they've, you know, uh, then they've got you, you know, uh, and, and I mean, it, you, you, you go back and forth with them over and over again and it, they don't give up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they really, they, 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 you know, I've, I've been in depositions where, you know, they, they were eight or nine to 10 hours long and, wow. uh, um, you know, I felt like I got hit by a truck afterwards. Sure. So, it, you know, this is obviously opposing counsel trying to throw you off. But what about your own counsel? Have they tried to influence you to say something? Have they, you know, given you, uh, you know, a little bit too much of uh, of what to say or how to say it that, that you don't necessarily um, agree with? Or do you feel that they pretty much rely on your expertise? Um, I mean, they, they, re they rely on that, you know, I mean, pretty much on my expertise, but but there are certain things, you know, what, one of the things that you asked me is, you know, is there anything that I wish I knew before I got started in, in, in this, in this area? And sure. I, and I, I, I think the biggest thing is just knowing the law, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, for whatever particular, uh, um, you know, matter that I'm, 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 I'm in. So if I'm in, if, if it's a patent case, you know, understanding the various nuances of patent law. Um, is really important for you as an expert witness because you're going to be applying those 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 rules and those laws as part of your uh, expert report and, and as ultimately as part of your deposition. Um, so so just know, knowing that uh, it would it would have been helpful. And I mean, you 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 learned it along the way, and and with 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 every attorney you know that that you work with, you you sort of get re reacquainted with the, the various rules that are necessary for that particular case. But, um, sure. but, you know, I mean, we spend, you know, uh, a good day, sometimes two days on prepping for the, for the, for the deposition where, you know, we, we, we go over the, the annual, uh, the, go over the reports and then they just ask you questions. Right? They, they, they sit there and they, they pretend to be the uh, opposing counsel and ask you questions. And then that sort of helps, you know, so you can understand how they're asking the questions and and um, also get sort of getting you ready for the things that they might ask. Um, and, you know, it, some, sometimes you go in and and they don't ask any of the questions that, that, that you were prepared for. And other times it's it, that it's exactly the questions that, that you get. <laughs> it, you, you just never know, um, you know, what they're going to come up with. Um, so you're talking what? about like a mock cross examination as yeah. a technique. Do you, do you find that that's useful? Is that something that you would recommend to attorneys in general that they should be doing with their experts? Oh, absolutely. I mean that that that's sort of a, an imperative that 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 gets done because it, it's it's important so that you understand how to answer. Because I mean, there's certain ways that this in general you want to divulge as as little information as possible. Sure. Right. Um, so, you know, you, you, you want to, it's, it's important to know how to answer the questions and, un, and understand, you know, the questions that they're giving you and, and where they're trying to take you, you know, uh, and, and so there have been some times where I've been, I've, I've been put in that corner and, you know, trying to get out of it. And, and sometimes I have been, and sometimes I haven't been. And, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll see in their in their um, rebuttal uh, or you know their their brief that oh, and Dr. Laviola even said this this and this. Mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, I said that it's completely out of context, but you got your your soundbite, and and therefore they're they're using me to try to help build their case. Um, so it's always it's always a back and forth between the two. Sure. So when when you're talking about, you know, kind of impeaching the witness, as it were, like, is is that something that you usually come up against? How do you prepare for them trying to uh, Im impeach you on the topic of your expertise in general? How do you counter that? Um, I find that um, when they're talking about the stuff that I am an expert in, um, you know, it, I don't have too many problems um dealing with that uh you know issues come into play when it may be something that i'm not as familiar with um but the the key with any deposition and, and any lawyer will tell you this 
is um, number one, you don't have to, you could take as long as you want to answer the question. Sure. Right? Which is really important because you don't have to answer the question until you feel confident in providing a good answer. So you have your report in front of you. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, that's sort of your, your Bible, if you will, that's your guidebook. And as long as you stick to your report, there's really nothing that the opposing counsel can do. Um, it's just, sometimes it's hard to stick to that report. You, you want, you, one of the things that you don't want to do is to get into a back and forth with a, a opposing counsel because right. the more that, that back and forth then leads you to start saying things that maybe, you know, uh, that, that, that you shouldn't say, um, it, it gets you into trouble. And, uh, I've, I've had my share of, of conversations with opposing counsel. Uh, and, you know, I, one of the things I really got to do is, is for me, any, any time uh, that I'm in a deposition is, is to make sure that I stick with what's in the report, refer to the report, read the report, you know, there, I've, I've heard of expert witnesses out there um, that, you know, they read from the report. They do not answer any questions that is not in the report, and that's it. And these <laughs> are these are these are the best the best expert witnesses that are out there that can that can do this. You know, and it's and sometimes it's it's really hard because you 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 know the opposing counsel's there's you know saying so you're not going to answer the question, you're not going to answer my question really, you know, and and so you start feeling well man, I really should answer the question, but no. No, you shouldn't answer the question. It's not in your report. You're there to talk about what's in your report. And um, that, that's something that's super important that you have to sort of drill into your head over and over again every time you do a de uh, deposition. It's staying within kind of the four corners of what yes, is asked of you. Absolutely. Sure. Well, you know, I'd like to back up to one of the things that you had mentioned, which is that an expert needs to have some knowledge of the law. Now, that's interesting because, you know, more, over, above and beyond the expertise in, in your field, obviously, you're saying that you have to understand the law as it pertains to your field. Could you tell me a little bit more about that and maybe give me an example of, of a case? I know you can't use specifics, but of a, of a case in which that became important, that you actually understood the law and, and the way that you're uh, the way that it was applicable to your field. Right. Well, um I mean, you know, as, as an example, you know, when you're doing things like claim construction, okay, mm -hmm. which is um, kind of like one of the first things that happens with, with a, 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 a patent case is, you know, you've got, you've got the claims that uh, patent and the, the two parties are trying to figure out what, what is, you know, the best plain, what is the plain ordinary, ordinary meaning of these terms that, uh, that, that, you know, that are in question. And like the, the the plaintiff will have their terms and the defense will have their terms and they sort of have to try to agree on which terms they want to try to uh, to 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 argue about. But uh, you know, there's sort of like a set of rules about how you're supposed to go about determining whether or not um, a claim term is considered to be you know indefinite, which means that mm -hmm. there's no really good definition for it and, and it can be thrown out. And, you know, and so there is the standard rule that, well, that the first thing you have to look for is, you know, is there plain ordinary meaning? Um, you know, does a term sort of make sense to someone of ordinary skill in the art at the time of the invention? Right. Um, and, and, and then if, if that is the case, then, then you, then you have to sort of say, well, you know, uh, okay, you know, it's, 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 it makes sense in the context of the plain ordinary meaning you know, for that particular time period. And, and, and that's all stuff that, that, you know, that as a computer scientist, you know, I, I don't, I didn't know about, I didn't know hmm. about that until I started working with, um, with, with, with lawyers doing these, doing these, these expert witness cases. Sure. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's just something... one example. Do you feel that that's something that attorneys could do a better job of letting you know what you need to know? giving you the, um, the known unknowns or is that they, something they do a is... pretty good job you know okay you know, great one of the things you know um i've been lucky to work with a lot of good attorneys and they're all very prepared very smart and you know many of them have technical undergraduate degrees i've noticed okay 
So, you know, they, they, they understand the technical jargon and can pick it up pretty quickly. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it, it's, it's just, they, the, they make sure that, that you are prepared. I mean, that's why you're, you, you know, you're, you're prepping for, you know, one to two days before you do one of these depositions or, you know, when you're, when you're writing your report, you know, that they're, they're going to go over it and make sure that everything is, is the way it's supposed to be and such. Um, and a lot, a lot of times in it, what, what happens is in your report, you actually say, you know, look, I'm not a lawyer, but my, 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 my counsel has told me about these things in the law that I am aware of. And then, so, so you, so then you, you sort of have this list of, of, of knowledge that you need to, um, to, to know about that's within the terms of, of, of the legal parts of the, of the engagement, um, and then, so you really, you really have to, to to study those because, um, you know, all of your expertise has to sort of fit in the context of those legal arguments. Uh, let's talk about report writing a little bit. Is do you typically get some kind of a skeleton provided to you, or are you writing reports whole cloth in general? Um, I, you know, it varies. It depends on on the on the attorney. It depends on the firm. Uh, but typically, I usually get some type of skeleton um, that has sort of a basic outline, and then which I can then fill in, uh, you know, the, the the main details. Um, you know, I I have I've had ones that that have been you know where that skeleton is really you know very bare bones, and I've had other ones where the skeleton has been more flushed out and it's been a more, a more thorough outline, and you know, and it it just makes it easier to 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 focus on the the stuff that I'm an expert on when it when sure. it's done that way. And do you ever feel that any of that has already been filled out in a way that you need to change it or proactively tell the attorney, "Hey, I'm not necessarily cr- comfortable with some of the stuff that is already, you know, pre-populated into the report that I would prefer to say it this way or that way?" Yeah, I mean, you know, you you have discussions with your with the uh uh attorney. Uh, about the material, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes there, there are, there are arguments to be made that may not necessarily go along with the way that you see um, the, 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 the material. So, sure. so there, so sometimes there's an, you know, an open, an open dialogue about the best way to, 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 to say certain things so that it fits within the context of, of the law and as well as in uh, towards, you know, whatever argument that you're trying to put to, to put forth. Sure. Uh, one thing I'd like to pivot to before we wrap up, uh, I like to ask everybody, this is winning the case important. And when you vet people, when you first decide whether or not you're going to take a case, is that part of the calculus? Do you worry over whether this is a winnable case or is it more, you know, this is an engagement. I'm going to give my expert opinion and that's all there is to it. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, I, uh, I tend to not look at whether the case is won or lost. Many of the cases that I've um, been on, um, you know, were were settled out of court. So, you know, I, I didn't uh, actually, you know, have, take it as far as, as it could have. Um, but, you know, I, at, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for things that I feel I can contribute to, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, so um, that that's one thing, you know, is, if it's an area that I feel like I know something about, then then, you know, then I'm I'm looking on at, at performing, you know, whatever is, duties are, are, are required for whatever, you know, uh, whether it's the defense or the plaintiff. Um, I also tend to do look at at the, the, the law firms as well. Hmm. Uh, you know, I've had. Uh, well, because you know, I mean, th- there there are certain certain situations where, for example, there may be a company that is uh, suing another company over patent infringement, and they have a patent, and but they, you know, maybe they're uh, uh, not not necessarily a, a known commodity. Uh, they're just what we like to refer to as patent trolls. Uh, and these people, you know, they've got patents that they've acquired or they've written, and they look for companies to sue. Right. And uh, and so, you know, typically um, 
and I, I I've been burned on on on, on this before is um, if the firm uh, or the client that you're that you're, you're working for you know doesn't have necessarily a good reputation um, you know it's that it, it, at least for me in my experience you know they haven't paid me and oh, that's something I definitely okay. don't want to have happen and luckily though in that situation the uh even though the client didn't pay the the law firm did pick up the tab which was very nice um but but i always look for you know to see who 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 the who the counsel is um you know is it a good reputable firm um things like that so it that all goes into it but the primary thing is can i i i make a contribution here can i help with the case based on my expertise that's number yeah. one do you turn down a significant number of cases? Um, I would say about half. Um, oh no, kidding! Yeah, I, I mean, for well, for one reason is it you know uh, it's not my area, you know. I mean, so sure. I get people who are saying, well, you know that, you know, we, we know you do expert witness work. This is the topic, and I'm just like, well, you know, that's really not my area, and and that's one thing you should you should really never do is is you know is is try to pick pick one if 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 you're not an expert in the topic then then you know you really shouldn't do it if, if you have cursory knowledge that that's not good enough you really have to have expertise because you know you're, you're going to be going into a lot of detail and being able to try to interpret a lot of things um so have you uh, ended up in ever ended up in a situation where uh, you know, during the initial phone call, you thought that you had the expertise that was required, but you it turned out that you had to either drop the case or do additional research in order to make yourself expert enough for the case. Yeah, uh, there have been there have been t times when um, I thought I did I thought I you know did well in the interview and and then they just decided to go in a different direction. Um, there's been a lot of cases where I've been asked to be an expert witness and I have a conflict because mm -hmm. I'm already engaged in another matter and I can't, you know, work for that company. Uh, that, that happens quite often, uh, unfortunately. Um, and, but then there's also been cases where, you know, I, I know ab about something, but I need to know more. So I go ahead and I learn more about that particular topic. And, okay. and that, you know, that, 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 I mean, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, sure. You want to make sure that, that you're, you know, you know, as much as you can about the area that you're in, that you're working in. Going back to billing. Um, how do you bill? Do you do project billing hourly? Do you take a retainer? Uh, for me, I do it hourly. Um, sure. And, uh, you know, I, one of the things that, that I, I did, um, was, uh, I, I had, you know, gotten some, some expert witness, um, you know, engagements and, and uh, I, I decided I, I wanted to, to be more active. I, I, I wanted to try to seek them out and sure. it's, it's not, not easy to, to, to seek these things out, but, you know, there are search firms out there that lawyers hire to find expert witnesses and, you know, round table is, is an example of one of them. Sure. Um, so, so I went and I, you know, filled in, applications for all these search firms it says you know here's my name this is what i do here's my expertise and if you find something you let me know and that opened the door um for a, a lot more potential engagements um hmm. so you know I, very often i get engagements through the expert search firms and then but then i also do every once in a while i'll get one that just comes straight th straight through me where they 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 found me on the internet they 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 uh, email me directly do you find that your previous engagements lead to further engagements? Um, it helps. Uh, I've had a number of occasions where the attorney asked me for uh, a previous attorney um, mm -hmm. to, to to speak with, and uh, so I've, I've given those references, and I believe that that's worked out. Um, you know, a, a lot of times. So there's lots of different ways that that you can sort of put yourself out there. Um, and, uh, you know, and it, it comes, it comes and goes too. you know, you might not have anything for a few months. And the next thing you know, you, you know, you get three, three different emails from three different people wanting you to, uh, to, to see if you're interested in a, uh, in a potential engagement. So it can be, uh, it can be challenging.
Before we wrap up, do you have any last advice for newer expert witnesses or attorneys that are working with newer experts? Uh, I think my biggest advice for new experts is um, don't worry if it takes you a long time to read a patent. Um, these patents are written on purpose to be very terse and difficult to to read. So, you know, if it's taking you several hours to read a patent, don't, don't feel like you're, you know, oh, you know, I, I can't read a patent in an hour or so. That means something wrong with me. I shouldn't be doing this. It's not, it's not true. You know, you take as long as you need and sometimes you got to read it over and over again. Um, that's one of the big things that, 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 that I learned early on is just, you know, and, and, and even then there, there's still things that, that you, that you might miss. So you have to continuously be familiar with the patent, um, you know, with claims and with the specification and so on. Uh, and Absolutely. it can take a while. Uh, sage advice. Thank you so much, Professor Laviola, for joining me here today. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. It was fun. And thanks to our listeners for joining us for another discussion at the Roundtable. Cheers. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Discussions at Roundtable. Our show notes are available on our website, roundtablegroup.com. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts or your favorite listening apps. 